He was a man of great intellect and great heart, a leader, a teacher, and mentor to many, a loving husband and father, a man of culture with a passion for the arts, an advocate for the aging, an Italian who loved his country but saw no national boundaries when it came to research to help others. Luigi Amaducci, a man of great vision. The worldwide, uh, the aging population is increasing. Uh, that uh, together with the increasing age, of course, there will be some pathological uh, events occurring in most of those cases. Uh, Alzheimer's disease is one of those, uh, which of course has a tremendous burden on the person, uh, on the caregivers, and on the health system. So we have to identify the way to control the symptoms and eventually to prevent uh, the disease. Ahead of his time, Professor Amaducci became interested in Alzheimer's disease and aging problems in the 1970s when very few people were aware of what was coming, and Alzheimer's disease was still an underdiagnosed illness. Professor Luigi Amaducci was one of the first people to realize the scope that the effects of Alzheimer's disease would have on society and how this little-known disease would become a widespread problem in a matter of decades. His contribution to the epidemiology of Alzheimer's disease uh, in Italy and abroad uh, uh, has been extremely important in, uh, uh, I would say, uh, making aware the, the, the medical world and the political world of the importance that Alzheimer was a acquiring in, uh, as a health problem. Professor Giancarlo Papel was a close friend and colleague of Professor Amaducci for over 40 years. He always had this uh, global vision of the problem. Uh, it was, and uh, he had this uh, uh, instinctive ability to detect uh, novelties, to, to understand what was really uh, important uh, in the future development. Professor Amaducci made Florence his home after obtaining his MD in Padua and spending two years at Harvard University as a postdoctoral student in neuropathology. In 1979, he became both professor of neurology and chairman of the Department of Neurologic and Psychiatric Sciences at the University of Florence Medical School. In later years, he was appointed Vice Rector for Scientific Research and International Affairs and served as Delegate for the Rector. It's in this laboratory at the University of Florence that Professor Amaducci and his colleagues were able to identify the first Italian families carrying Alzheimer's genes. He was very, very linked to the lab. He was uh, almost, uh, not every day, but a few days a week, he was here in the lab asking what he was going do, what he was uh, what he was doing and uh, how things were going uh, uh, checking the results uh, and uh, su providing suggestions often very important suggestions professor sandro sorbi is continuing the genetic work he started with professor amaducci he met the professor when he was a student and then became one of his closest collaborators professor sorbi says it was Professor Amaducci who sparked his interest in neurology and the study of Alzheimer's disease. Listening to a beautiful, fascinating lesson on uh, neurology provided by Amaducci, that was 1975, 1976, so many years ago. And uh, they were not just about the disease. Uh, of course, the, the course was on, on uh, nervous and mental diseases, but it was telling us about uh, how the brain works. Uh, at least it was... Uh, uh, giving us the impression that with him it was possible to learn how the brain works. Another one of Professor Amaducci's former students who became a close collaborator is Professor Domenico Inzitri. Professor Inzitri has taken over Professor Amaducci's clinical work and epidemiological studies at the University of Florence. He's taken over the direction of the targeted project on aging of the Italian National Research Council a project Professor Amaducci was extremely dedicated to for the last five years of his life. We now realize, as uh, his pupils and the students, that uh, he, lef uh, he left us to us uh, a lot of uh, good things uh, to do, and uh, uh, also the prestige of uh, our institution, and also a well-known uh, uh, well uh, 
uh, activities in the field of uh, research all, all over the world. And uh, so uh, his contribution uh, and what uh, he left to us is very important also uh, for ourselves and for the work we will be doing uh, in the next few years. Professor Amaducci's activities went well beyond the university, although he never forgot his primary role as a clinician scientist. He was a founding member of the EURAGE project, which was instrumental in building up a network within the European community involved in dementia studies. Professor Amaducci was elected Italian delegate for the Biomedical and Health Research Program of the European Union in 1994 and then re-elected to the Biomed II. Professor Amaducci was chairman of the European Affairs Committee of the European Federation of Neurological Societies and president of the Italian Neurologic Society. Professor Amaducci's work also extended beyond the laboratory to touch not only the brains but the hearts of people suffering from this terrible disease. He was involved in organizing the first support groups throughout Italy, not only for Alzheimer's patients, but for family members and friends coping with this disease. Professor Amaducci was a founding member of the World Federation of Neurology Research Group on Dementia, which he chaired, until cancer took him away at the age of only 66. I think that what has spent my merit has always been the passion. The passion, really. Il lavoro era enorme, lui ha, credo, fatto nella sua vita quello che le persone normali, eh, non so, forse ce ne vorrebbero tre di persone per fare <ride> quello che lui è riuscito a fare da solo. Era incredibile la sua capacità di, di, di seguire una molteplicità di, di filoni. E credo che senza questa, questa grande passione non sarebbe stato umanamente possibile tutto questo. Dr. Maria Pia Amaducci shared 35 years with a man she describes as passionate and full of courage. And despite his many scientific achievements and acknowledgments, a man who always remained humble. A caring husband and father to their three children who liked to walk through the gardens of their villa on the hills of Florence and listen to classical music. La musica che è stata una delle grandissime passioni della sua vita. Suonava il pianoforte come la sua mamma. La storia. Lui aveva una grandissima curiosità per, per tutto, per la vita, per, il, per tutta la realtà. E certamente era un uomo di cultura nel senso completo del, del termine. It is this curiosity for life itself which drove Professor Luigi Amaducci to search for answers in the fight against Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Professor Amaducci leaves behind a group of scientists he trained to the highest international standards of research to continue his work and carry on his legacy. Spero che che questi davvero si sentano come degli eredi spirituali di mio marito e non soltanto nel valore e nella serietà delle ricerche scientifiche ma anche nel modo profondamente umano di affrontare tutti i problemi che queste ricerche comportano. Credo che continuare a legare il nome di mio marito a ai settori di cui lui si è occupato, continuando a promuovere e a contribuire a promuovere la ricerca, eh, sia quello che, che lui in fondo ha sempre fatto e che qualcuno sono contenta che continui a fare, mi ha fatto molto piacere.